Hey guys, how you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. And uh, yeah, today I wanted to just do a second part on airships and you know what was really going on back in the early 1900s with all these tall buildings and towers and airships. And this photo in front of us, this says that it's the Empire State Building. And down here we have the lower observation floor, uh, the winches and anchors dirigible to mast. Now the dirigible, that's uh, the airship. Then we've got steps going up here. We've got an elevator. Cables, stairs, elevator, elevator shaft, enclosed observation deck, observation platform, exit from dirigible. I thought they were called dirigibles, but it's called uh, dirigible. Uh, and the mooring mechanism, and we've got a big light coming out of here as well. Uh, beacon lights. So this is obviously, uh, you know, for for night time, right? To so that. They're like airport lights, so that the planes know where to land. This is so the airships know where to go. And in the last video, I did mention that um, lighthouses may have something to do with this. And so if this is, like I said, this was marked the Empire State Building. So I don't know 100% if this is a drawing of it or if this is you know something else but clearly this is a building this isn't an office building this you know that this is completely built as a landing station and an airport for this airship so you know what's really going on are a lot are a lot of these buildings have they just been retrofitted out into you know, cubicles where people can can sit there and expend energy rather than having our freedom over the earth by travel. So yeah, I thought we'd have a bit of a deeper look. So let's get into this. <laughs> And I wanted to say thank you to everyone who supports this channel and my work. Everyone who likes, subscribes, shares, comments, and of course to all my Patreons and everyone who is supporting me through PayPal and uh, my merch stores. Thank you so much. It definitely helps because uh, as you all know, I've been completely demonetized across both my channels now. Uh, so basically, yeah, there's no revenue coming in apart from you guys. So thank you so much. It definitely helps. And if you do want to support this channel, there are links below in the description. So let's jump into it. Okay, so here's a another picture. I think this is a picture. It's a little bit strange. Um, again, you know, kind of vanilla skies out the back there. It looks like this. See, it looks like this is. A stage or drawn see this line here or maybe that's just the vanilla sky they've put in there and they're hiding something but can you see that that looks this line here doesn't look natural but this front bit kind of does but I don't know the Sun looks different from this building I don't know if this photo is real but here we have again tall building this is a building with just a spire up the top and we've got this loaded here and down here we have a platform where these people would be able to get on and off the boat of the <laughs> airship and it says inaugural mooring of the USS Shenandoah and the LC Smith building in Seattle USA there we go and of course in the background here we have another tower with a big spire off it interesting uh, here's another picture. I think this is the Empire State as well, just to show you. Docking at the top there. This is, yeah, a close-up. Uh, sorry about this 
watermark but as you can see these guys are up the top uh, this is the front we've got a rope here or a cable around this winch and they're basically yeah it's tethered up to you know it looks like a circular winch so I'm not sure what happens uh, maybe it gets tied down to this arm as well so it doesn't spin around in circles but you know clearly this is made uh, to dock an airship this one uh, okay this is the lady heterodyne airship regatta again I'm not sure if this is real or not but it's a very cool looking airship thing here we've got hasn't it look at that oh and fancy hat party um, looking for a year so yeah I can't find a year so I'm not sure that might just be you know an advertisement but very steampunk very cool and this is the whole thing this this fits in with the whole steampunk thing doesn't it uh, this is modern mechanics and what is this circle thing going around the outside around the outside around the outside whoops hey uh, and look at this what's this energy burst thing here so this is a uh, in the early 1900s probably 1910s 1920s and yeah popular mechanics look at that Oh, this is a good shot now this is just like a photo and we can see here an airship with the guy at the front underneath pedaling away or doing something this is like clearly this is like a balloon not a zeppelin here we have another balloon oh here we have airships and balloons so this is where people are taking off and when we look at this uh, we have these kind of balloon type you know airships and then we have the framed ones which you'll see a bit later so there's definitely different tech involved here uh, here's some balloons just thought it was an interesting pick very round not sure what the date of this is you know around that they'll say you know around the late 1800s early 1900s nice old world bridge in the background But this is the thing, you know, balloons, they just, you know, they're not very practical. Now, this is the Crystal Palace. And as I said in the last video, Martin has theorized that these are airship, um, either, you know, docking stations or airports or um, places to store them. Because look at the size of them. And obviously arched roofs. Now, this is obviously being filled up. This is uh, during one of the exhibitions. So this is where they've got they've gone and raided all the buildings and everything around them and put all the tech in one place that they could grab. But yeah, what was this used for previously? And is it glass to keep it warm to keep the airships inflated? Uh, you know, with helium and all this kind of stuff. When you put it in the cold, it shrinks. Here's another shot. Again, this is all being just brought in all this stuff down here, but. Uh, we're looking at the shape here. You now it looks a lot like a hanger, doesn't it? This is it from uh, the top. And as you can see, we've got these big long bits and these cross bits. So it's almost like, you know, are these, is this sort of the main terminal? And we've got, you know, bits here where you get on and they leave. You know, three terminals here. And then, of course, we have the towers on each end. So was this maybe, I don't know, was this where they were uh, just kept maybe and this is where you left or is this, I don't, you know, where they came in and docked and you got off and yeah, this was like the holding station, don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's something going on because there's a train station underneath here as well. And of course, look at all this. This looks like a star city in the background at this point. This is uh, in London. And look at all the yeah, geometry on the ground there. This is the train station underneath. There we go. That's there. Old world. So this is the thing where they were they using trains to get around, you know, sort of 
you know, within a small area, sort of cities that weren't too far away, airships to get further away, you know, overseas and things, over mountain ranges, and uh, canals to go around within the cities, and no doubt they had some other kind of techs as well. We've seen things like moving sidewalks and all this other stuff, and another shot of the Crystal Palace. And this one, you can see it's got levels, you know, so is this a docking bay? Or is this where they maybe held them to, you know, do any repairs or whatever? And this is so they could get to them. Because, like I said, this all this stuff here has been brought in. You know, where did they find these? You know, this is England. And there we go. Here's a nice shot of a docked airship. Now, I think... I uh, can't read it anyway, sorry, but I think it's in German, but yeah, airships in the background, and and see, see again, see this, is this what they're blacking out, there's something here, okay, and we've got these, these four, like, were, were the skies filled with these, is that what the vanilla sky phenomenon is, to black this out, and, and maybe other aerial machines who who knows because another thing about this shape is you know we have this phenomenon of you know ufos and many of them you know one of the you know so-called classes of them are the cigars the cigar shaped ufos what does that look like you know are these you know, when we were told they stopped using these because of, you know, the Hindenburg explosion, did they actually just keep using them and, and increasing the tech? And are they high altitude now? Who knows? Uh, this is the Eiffel Tower. And just to show you, like, this is clearly a deck. Now, they say that this is an observation deck, but we saw in that previous photo uh, the first one that they had these decks, but they were clearly marked as decks to get on and off airships. And then on top, look, look at this tech. I mean, this is this would all be you know uh, mobile phone stuff, I guess. But it's just loaded up, and of course, at the top we have this massive spire. And they tell us it's all for you know transmission these days of you know phones and TV and all this stuff, but, you know, is it really? Here again, vanilla skies, and you can see in the background this stuff, you know, it has that been covered up? You can almost see shapes up here. Uh, but yeah, here we have an air balloon, oh, an airship with someone underneath it. This is an, just, you know, an old version. And all these people dressed in exactly the same clothes, standing around like it's, uh, they've all been brought in to stand around and get this photo done. And, I mean, look at the background. You know, does that look superimposed? Because look at this foreground. There's a, You can almost see a line here. Let's have a look. See that? I mean, that that is, right? Look at, can you sort of see that glow, that sort of white kind of aura right across here? So is this back thing superimposed? Is this superimposed? We we now this is the question. We've got to work all this stuff out because we know that they had photoshopping, you know, over a hundred years ago. And this does look I mean it may not be, but it looks like it's been superimposed with a backdrop. Don't know, you know, if this was in the you know, the back photo or the fore photo. But another thing to notice is ending here, but none of them are looking up. This guy's looking backwards, but look, they're all, none of them are looking up, up at all. Their heads are all flat. So they got called in, but they forgot to look up. So what the, what the, what is going on? This is another shot uh, of the top. Now this, I think, is a tower in the US. I don't think it's the Eiffel Tower. Pretty sure it's not. But just again, you can see these are just all 
Dex. Got open Dex here so you can get out and access airships and close observation decks up the top of all these buildings that are all over the place. But now they just tell us that you now they just whack all these aerials on them. And go, oh no, 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 it's just it's just aerial, it's just an observation deck. This is uh, inside the foyer of the Empire State Building. Many of you would have seen this before. And it's just interesting that, you know, what's going on at the top here? With all this energy, is it coming out? Because it's clearly coming out of the top of this thing. You know, everyone will try and say this is the sun, but why is the center of it at the top of this? And what's this sideways blast? You know, is that telling us that this is, you know, some kind of powering station? You know, again, are they, were they powering up these airships? with free energy. Uh, this is very similar to the first photo we saw. Down here, okay, artist conception of the activities to be carried out on the mooring mast when the present plans for the dirigible accommodations are complete. Oh, well, there you go. So this is New York, uh, oh, New York World. So this is so that basically says that this is how it was, and and he's just showing uh, what alterations they're going to make. So there you go. It's a docking station, and again, how much does that look like a lighthouse? Uh, now this, I believe, this one's in Germany. And this is people docking, getting on to an airship. Uh, I think this, you know, I think this is called a dirigible because see how it's got the ribs. This, these have like a solid um, frame, so they're different to the balloon types. But yeah, airship. And yeah, look at all these people, and look at the building. I mean, it's not the best shot, but see all this metal work. See how it's all metal frames, just like the Crystal Palaces, and is that glass? You know, what's this inside? That's the thing, is this like a Crystal Palace? Because look at the size of these things. And look at the amount of people they can carry. Whoops, well, yeah, that's a good shot. Um, Building provides mooring mast for Zeps. Well, there you go. Same thing, building with this big mast observation deck on top. <laughs> Fast burning tear gas candle. Oh, doesn't sound very nice. Uh, this composite photograph shows how the Graf Zeppelin compares with the Empire State Building. So it's the Empire State. New Yorkers may soon become accustomed to the sight of a giant lighter than air liners moored to the tops of downtown skyscrapers. For well, the Empire State Building now under construction on 34th Street and 5th Avenue when completed, will be topped by a mooring mast of the latest type. This new building, which will rise to a height of 1,100 feet, will top the Eiffel Tower of Paris by 174 feet and will be the tallest structure in the world. It is planned to make this building the western terminal of transatlantic airships. So there you go. <laughs> What was this actually built as? They're telling you right there. This new building which will rise to the uh, height of 1100 feet. It is planned to make this building the western terminal of the transatlantic airships. Which we obviously never got because we had a PSYOP uh, called the Hindenburg disaster. Uh, inventions for all, oh, so I don't unfortunately have a date. I think it dated up here, did it? No. 
so this is yeah obviously as you know printed at the time that they were building the Empire State Building. So there you go. This <laughs> and this is a, a mooring mast. And again, look at this, right? You know, I did that uh, in one of my videos. I think it was the uh, China fake building ones. And I showed all the different sort of towers that look like the Eiffel Towers. And that's what these look like. And they're actually mooring masts. Now, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Why it's upright? Because you wouldn't want to be inside this airship when it's doing that. But, but yeah, it, the mooring mast. We see these everywhere, right? Now they're all we're told they're all communications towers. This I just found interesting. It's just an old design, but again, we get these balls. Okay, there's a guy in here who's driving it. Another guy up here. It's all very techy, but here we have this ball. I mean, that it's not a big enough balloon to be creating lift. This thing's not even taut. So what's that? And there's another one here. The balls, the mercury balls. And of course, there's another one there. And uh, yeah, mercury uh, was... Is, well, is said to be what they use to um, get anti-grav for Vimanas. Uh, they would spin it in a gyroscope, gyroscope and it would give them anti-grav. So what are these? Is there a little gyroscope, gyroscope inside this ball spinning mercury around, giving them lift? Because this clearly is a, a... The machine looks too big to be lifted by this propeller. At least rotor. Hmm. Uh, this is another monthly cover, and as you can see, the same thing. Big tower, pretty much just what we saw there. Uh, here, with these. See the top of this tower? Looks exactly like this. Okay, mooring tower. This is the landing station, and look at the size of this zeppelin. Huge bit here, and we've got four gondolas on this side, no doubt four on the other side. And this thing's huge down here. Now that's the sort of shape these holding, uh, like the holding warehouses, because like, you know, that's the kind of shape that we see in the Crystal Palaces. Nice big city out there. Ah, uh, yeah, here we go. Now, I think this is more of a concept. But look at that. This is this is where they were going with airships and it all got stopped. I mean look at that. An actual floating airship airport. But yeah, that got wasn't allowed because they couldn't monetize it. Couldn't tie it to money. A skyscraper airport for the city of tomorrow. And so this is what people were thinking. And this is all airships, guys. See? Airships. These things are not planes. They're airships. So imagine, you know, how much less energy you would need to float this thing. It just, you know, you don't have to go up and down. Just float it into a building. People get on and off. Go out the other side. You know, you don't need all these thrusts that, we, that they need for aeroplanes. Well, apparently they tell us they do. If you look into the whole fuel things with aeroplanes and the size of their fuel tanks, you know, something going on there too. But this is, whoops, this is what was, you know, this is what people were thinking and designing and this may have been what we had. This may have been built off, you know, ideas from, from the past. You know, rediscovering the old tech and trying to get it back out there, but uh, the parasites did not want that. This is two days to Europe in a flying hotel. So this is what they were talking about with uh, the Empire State Building, you know, being the port for the western side, you know, western what was it, the Western Atlantic airship route. You know, they were talking about airships like this. There will be balloons, elaborate baths, gorgeous bedrooms, 
uh, sun parlors, promenades in these air monsters in which you will move swiftly over the airways of the world. And look at this, we have all the rooms here and these massive just common areas. Looks like there's a ballroom up here. Oh my gosh, there's aeroplanes in the back. Look at this, and this is probably our uh, you know, it looks like kind of the 30s, 20s, 30s. I mean, talk about our tech going backwards. We've been regressed. Here we go. It's 1934. Pack your bag. It's 1934 and you are bound for Paris. That means you must catch the Berlin airliner. that left Cleveland an hour ago. There are silver sliver in the distance it comes. Already it has picked up your radiogram. Paris passenger waiting at Humpterville. Your motor car whirls you to the local airport. An airplane with a funny looking hook sprouting from its back stands ready. The silver sliver in the distance becomes a cigar. Then a shark in size. Then an airship. Then a veritable shimmering and symmetrical mountain of motion droning like 10 billion contented bees in the sun. Ready, sir, says your local plane pilot. You get in the plane with a funny hook and it darts aloft up up until the big line is directly overhead you feel as if you were riding on a fly underneath a silver skinned elephant a t-shaped trapdoor opens in the bottom of the airliner a trapeze is let down and so gently that you are, that you barely notice it because the speed of the plane has become synchronistic synchronized with that of the ship the hook in the plane's back is caught in the bar of the trapeze now the plane is lifted bodily and easily as the fly it seems to resemble up through the trapdoor into the hull of the liner itself and un, uh, a uniformed attendant takes your bag as you step from the tiny cabin onto the solid floor of a spacious room this way sir so there you go this is what they wanted to do I mean, and to tell you the truth, that sounds a bit cooler than what we've got now. And they're saying two days to Paris, two days to Europe from America. And of course, there's more of an article here. Um, I need a, <laughs> we need a website or something where I can post all these. Uh, maybe I'll uh, post some of them on Facebook if you want to have a read of them. Let me know below. Uh, okay, so, whoops, that's the wrong way. This one, this is another, you know, design of what they had planned as an aerial aircraft carrier. Now, this, it's actually a huge airship, but they've just widened it. So you can see here, it's the same design, but it's just been wide. It's, it's literally like a big wing. And this is where they were going. Flying aircraft carriers and huge troops and helium gives it additional lifting power as a passenger cargo carrier, as an aerial aircraft carrier. You know, so, you know, we, we've, oh, we've got all the answers. We had more answers by the looks of it back then. Here's another. And, you know, when you start to look at this and you see all these towers with these bits on the top, you know, really. What was going on back in the day? Uh, there's that one again. Here's a cross section. I think I showed this in the last video. But again, this is what they were doing. You know, they were carrying lots and lots of people inside these. Lots of people. Another one, you know, more to these towers that we see everywhere. You know, so literally, I guess, I don't know, I guess you can get inside that one as well. Go up the lift, get in, off you go. Okay, so this is Gizmodo, 31 photos from the golden age of airships when Zeppelins ruled the skies. And here we go. Again, Zeppelin coming up to dock at the top of the Empire State Building. In France, 1884, 
Now, as you can see, this one's not ribbed. So this is basically a, like a balloon. And they've got carriages or, you know, gondolas underneath it. So, you know, this is, quite, you know, how did they come up with this idea? Is this something that they've seen photos of or that they knew about? And they've tried to, you know, recreate it? Because they went pretty quickly. 20, 30 years, you know, from things like this and balloons to things like this, 1904. So that's just 20 years later. This is all ribbed. It's got, you know, uh, what do you call those fins? And this is the building they're going to try and get it into. I don't know how it's going to go into there, but you can see the size of the buildings that they that these need to be docked in. Uh, this is 1908, and this one is fully ribbed. And big gondolas under there, so it's carrying a bit of weight. It's got mo uh, fans here for propulsion. 1908. I mean, that's way ahead of you know airplane technology back then, isn't it? You know, they go on so much about the Wright brothers and oh, they discovered flight. No, they didn't. These things were around. They just, you know, they were, they got the credit for the first plane, which they didn't even. Just you know, invent that either. Uh, here's another one. This is just a drawing. People inside one of the gondolas. Again, and this just looks like I don't know, like a plane without wings almost, doesn't it? That's hanging down below it. That's uh, 1915 to 25. This is 1916. Apparently, a German Zeppelin caught in the searchlights during a bombing raid. Look at the size of that thing. And again, you know, cigar shaped. Is that the UFOs? British airship, 1917. Uh, now this is 1919 Belfast, and you can see how these are framed. And they fill them with uh, gases that are lighter than air. And this is nice, isn't it? Two girls who worked at Short Brothers Works building Zeppelins in 1919. Oh, they look so happy. Two girls, yeah. They look like two orphans that have been turned into slaves. And here's some more orphans that don't know what they're doing inside being made to work on tech they don't understand. A uh, good shot here, just again, the size of these things. All these people, this time at least they're looking at it, but these guys actually look superimposed, don't they? Uh, people everywhere, all in, of course, you know, the old world garb, hats, suits, ties, big dresses. Uh, prepares for the first flight ever. Barlow, Yorkshire. <laughs> August 1919, 19, model of the British R-34 airship at a carnival. So that's pretty much what the Wright brothers built anyway. <laughs> Chuck a wing on that and that's what they called their plane. Uh, US Navy, of course, 1923. And, you know, we don't hear a lot about airships in World War One, do we? Looks like they were there though. Now this. Circa 1925, the lounge of the British airship R101. These passenger quarters were the most spacious ever provided in an airship. This is inside the airship. So they had like their, their quarters, their, their rooms with bathrooms, and they had these, you know, dining rooms and living areas. Uh, another picture of construction. And yeah, here are the bedrooms. And even a kitchen. Inside an airship. And these guys have got a toy, you know, like boys, you know, 10, 20 years later all had toy planes, didn't they? Back in the day they had toy airships. 1929, the British airship R100 flies through a thick layer of clouds. 
she was scrapped after the crash of her sister ship in 1930. So here we go, the decline, right? So this one was perfectly fine. Um, the sister ship crashed, so they destroyed this one. Yeah, that makes sense. And 1930, this is all around Hindenburg time. This is uh, when, obviously, yeah, they were just like, nah, this tech's too good, let's destroy it. We can't control it. Let's destroy it. 1929, airships in the air. Old street lights that we see everywhere. Oh, this is a viewing deck. This is inside again, inside the airship. Got the windows, have a look out. I mean, how cool would that be? That would be just a very cool experience. They're just all hanging out. Uh, the maid prepares a dish in the kitchen. The full kitchens. More people looking out the windows. And look at these, like, yeah, like it says, they're like cruise ships. Everyone in their best gear, of course, all dress the same. They all look a bit, I don't know, a bit bewildered and flustered, don't they? These two, these are looking at the camera at least. Uh, another airship. Oh, look at this. Nice old world stadium. Uh, oh, okay, that's Wembley. Yeah, right. Oh, really? Wow, what did Wembley Stadium used to be? It looks like it was a Coliseum. Graf Zeppelin over Jerusalem. Over the pyramids. Uh, this was a third flight. When a violent storm sent it crashing tail first into the Atlantic Ocean, 1933. Nice year. Uh, a few things crashed in that year. Uh, and okay, so the Hindenburg was four years later. So the Hindenburg was 37. So we see, you know, just in this article, we can kind of see that uh, in the 30s, they're sort of trashing stuff. Oh, no, this is crashed, this is crashed. Oh, we've got to take them down. Oh, then the Hindenburg. Oh, cut. No, sorry. We can no longer use airships. They're too dangerous. We'd much rather pollute the skies with jet fuel and chemtrails. And here it is, the Hindenburg 1937, and here it says a few hours before it burst into flames. And there it goes. Burn it. Killed 36 people, and that, that that you know that effectively ended the golden age of airships. This is airships.net. Here we have the cigar, is Zeppelin cigar. Okay, so that's the third time cigars come up in this video. Cigar-shaped UFOs, anyone? What's really going on? So I'll leave the links to these so you can have a look through them, but this has just got a bit about, uh, you know, different types of airships, Hindenburg, Zeppelins, US Navy, and we've got some old photos here. Again, a big cigar. Again, these are these, what you need to house them. So these things were everywhere, and they were huge. And this is the thing. This is, you know, 1907. You know, you don't start off building things like this, you know. I mean, yeah, we can, they had hot air balloons, they tell us, back in the 1700s, sort of 1780s. Uh, but that, but they're very a very different machine to these. You know, they're not steerable, they're, they're, they're literally just a balloon. and how they heated the, the, the air, we don't know. Maybe they were using helium, we don't know. Uh, but, but to start building things of this size, you would need to know what you were doing and you would need to be doing it for a while. It, it's like the old, you know, the old story with the architecture. You don't start off with these massive, massive 
you know, brick structures. You start off with wooden huts, and the same here. There's not much. There's not much time at all between when they were supposedly building, you know, their first kind of, uh, you know, these kind of balloony type ones. That's 1899. So when they have these full-blown, you know, zeppelins with, you know, in the 20s, you know, you've seen the visual pictures with the airports and the buildings. And in the 30s, those lounges inside. I mean, so how long has this tech been around? Here again, parking one. And so you need, you know, a lot of infrastructure. To get it, you know, to build it, to house it. But once it's done, they're, they're, then they're very free and cheap to use. There's another crash. This here end of it looks like a dome. And yeah, hard to park. And this is just uh, uh, this is just the top of the Eiffel Tower, but you know, clearly it's showing me different towers here because these, you know, like this thing. I don't know, is that that? A few of them just look different. Like that's clearly a different building. That's clearly a different building. This is Eiffel Tower. I think that one might be in Vegas. Uh, yeah, Las Vegas. But I mean, again, look at this deck and everything. And they're telling us that was just built as a replica. We've got this big spire. That looks like... You now these all look like landing docks. Don't they? Look at them all. And we've seen the buildings, you know, they're all over the, you know, there's buildings everywhere with viewing docks, but now we're told they're just viewing, viewing platforms because they're high. But, uh, you know, they were actually there so you could watch the airships come in. Uh, so this is the Sand Island Lighthouse in Alabama. And same kind of thing, really. We've got stairs going up. We've got a platform here. And we've got a light. You know, is this connected to airships? Because we have these types of things everywhere. And they kind of say, yeah, there's a... Oh, God, look at this dude's beard. We have to have a look at this guy. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, yeah, like all the tops of these things, all of them, they've got platforms. What is that? Uh, but we're told, you know, that's just, you know, you've got this big light, but they need a platform there so that the, the lighthouse owner, God knows how he gets there or where he lives, uh, but we need it there so he can just wander around and have a look, I guess. I mean, <laughs> what are they there, you know? Again, out in the middle of nowhere, a light and a platform. You know, were these linked up to boats in some somehow, or were they refueling stations for airships? So this is inside of an air, uh, a lighthouse, and this looks very similar to that picture that we saw the inside of the top of the. The Empire State Building. Okay, we've got, you know, inside we've got external deck. It's got the light. It's got this bit that it can hang on to. So I don't know. I just there might be a link there. Just asking questions because lighthouses, you know, there's questions, right? Um. You know, how did they? How did they build most of them? Out, you know, the ones that are out in the middle of the ocean. How did they build them? Were they really just built? I mean, were there that many ships around back in the day that they needed all these lights everywhere? Because the thing about a lighthouse is, you need to go and discover that land. And you know, how did they find out where the rocks and stuff were unless they were smashing their boats on them? And once you've done that. You can't be building. You can't build a lighthouse. You can't. You haven't reached the land. So it's kind of like the lighthouse has to be there first, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, obviously, once you've you've 
you know, colonize the land and and you know where the, the bad bits are, well, yeah, sure, you want to stop people, well, you want to stop boats from smashing on them, but then going out and trying to build one of these things in the middle of the ocean, I mean, that would almost kill more people in the construction than you would save from crashing their boats. So they don't make a lot of sense, these lighthouses. You know, like a lot of things, and it's a whole it's a whole rebranding, isn't it? The whole refacing, you know, the, the face adding. They've just got all the old world and they've just told it is. I mean look how are they I mean this is a joy, but how are they gonna try and explain they've built that? So there we go, that's the questions. Airships, you know, it's looking very much like they were everywhere and they were tech. And that all these towers may have been built in, you know, to the infrastructure. Right, levels going up. Looks like there's a deck here. Tower at the top. What's going on? And just to finish off, here's a few old pick of France in the 1800s. And we have some guy up here flying around in his airship. Uh, 1889, that one. This is a design. And... We have this control system. I'm not sure these these are weights. Maybe I don't know. Oh, but yeah, we've got this balloon here, and we've got like a gondola underneath. And this one is back. I'm pretty sure this was the 1700s. Okay, so they can close that bit as well. Uh, so this one is. I don't know, it doesn't really have a day. Oh, here we go. Seven, mm, around 1800, maybe 1700s. And we have this. Look at this. Big air balloon airship. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Is this like the... Yeah, okay, that's a guy down there sitting in his gondola, steering it. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. Pretty cool. And that one again, you know, they, all this stuff is back you know, hundreds of years ago. Doesn't exactly say, but you know, 1800s. And here's another one, uh, Transcontinental Aerial Navigation Company, New York. So this is obviously something to do with uh, the New York City Empire State Building and the docking there. Gardner & Co, Brooklyn, New York. And look at this. So this is double story underneath it. I think there are people walking along decks. Of course, that would not be allowed today because... You know, the government have to keep us safe, don't they? Got the American flag there and just this huge balloon. I can't even see any propulsion or anything, how that's moving. Oh, but it's quite clearly they're saying that's going to go across the ocean. Oh, on the vacuum principle. There you go. And of course it's got... On each end, big aerials poking out. So there you go, guys. What do you reckon? Um, is there another story here behind these airships? Have they stolen and taken that tech away from us, we the people, and are still using it for themselves, maybe at high altitude? Is this what the cigar-shaped UFOs are? Uh, is this why we have so many vanilla skies, because this stuff was... You know, the sky was full of airships and other flying machines. What are, what are the balls? You know, is this, is 
there more tech involved here with these getting charged from these stations somehow, these uh, docking ports. Lots and lots of questions because clearly, as we've seen in these photos, a lot of people, uh, you know, were putting their money that airships were the way of the future and then they literally stopped almost overnight. So there we go. Airships. All right, guys. Thanks for spending some time with me. Hope you enjoyed that one. Have a fantastic day. And I'll catch you on the next upload. Bye for now.